How did you do? Did you use our general rule? To raise one power, the power 9, to another, the power 8, multiply the exponents. 9 times 8 is 72. The answer is 7 to the power 72. Note two things here. First, these three expressions are identical. They are different ways of saying exactly the same thing. Second, you didn't have to write out all 72 sevens and then count them to find the answer. With our rule, we avoided the mess, like magic. So, is this magic only for multiplication? How about the other direction, division? Let's go back to what we first learned about multiplication and find out. Our rule was this, to multiply powers with the same base, what did we do? We added the powers, added the exponents. Now let's see what we can learn about division. Once again, two expressions with the same base both have exponents. How do we divide 5 to the power 7 by 5 to the power 3? First, as always, we do it the easy way, which always gets messy and is really the hard way. We have seven occurrences of five multiplied together, and we divide that by three occurrences of five multiplied together, giving us this odd-looking fraction. Can we reduce the fraction by canceling? We can. We divide both top and bottom by five three times over, which leaves us with four occurrences of five multiplied together, or 5 to the power 4. So our division, the easy way, was a lot of work. Is there a shortcut there? Without all that counting and canceling of fives? There is. And it's just the opposite of what we did to multiply. So what do you think the rule would be? To divide powers with the same base, you do what? You've got it. You subtract exponents, top minus bottom. But some expressions could be a problem. What if the higher power, the larger exponent, is on the bottom? Apply the rule and what do we get? A headache because 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. 8 to the power of a negative 2? What in the world does that mean? We can't let 8 happen negative 2 times and then multiply them together. So we better find out what it does mean. Let's go back to doing this problem the easy, hard way. We already know that 8 to the 3rd over 8 to the 5th can be written like this. And we know we can reduce the fraction by canceling out 3 of the 8s. It's 1 over 8 to the power 2. This answer is correct. The answer we got by following our subtraction rule, 8 to the power of negative 2, was also correct, which means the two are different ways of saying the same thing. And since all negative exponents act this way, we can make a rule for all of them. Here's the easiest way to put it. The negative sign in a negative exponent means 1 over, giving us a fraction. Just picture that minus sign turning the expression into 1 over the base to a positive power, and you've got it. And that's great, because it means our rule can work for all exponents, positive or negative. Let's try this example. Our division rule requires the subtraction of exponents. In this case, the subtraction of negative numbers, which you know how to do, right? Okay, using the division rule, we subtract exponents, top minus bottom which gives you a simple problem in the subtraction of negative numbers, where minus a negative or a double negative equals a positive or plus. And the answer is simply negative 3 plus 5 or positive 2. x to the power 2, x squared. You may think we have a lot to remember about exponents, but it all comes down to these three simple statements. If you remember these rules, we are ready to move on. If you don't, you might want to review the troublesome ones. Okay, before we finish, let's look at two special cases. The first is very simple. What does x to the power of 0 mean? 
Don't panic, just use what you already know. Let's look at an example where we can use our first rule, x to the power 0 multiplied by x to the power 3, which oddly gives you x to the power 3, one of the same things you started with. And that has to mean that x to the power 0 is the number 1. So as long as we never use 0 as a base, which would get us nowhere fast, any base to the power 0 equals 1. And that leaves only one more special exponent to talk about, x to the power 1. What can we say about it? x to the power 1 is x one time, or just x. But you knew that, right? We need to add one final rule to our list. Question. What is another way of writing this expression? You can write it like this. If you want to see why that works, pick a number for n and solve it the hard, easy way, like we did for all the other rules. Notice that this is a case of the same exponent and different bases. That's just the opposite of what we were looking at before. And that does it. Congratulations. You have mastered all the rules that tell us how to multiply and divide expressions with exponents. Notice that we do not have a rule yet for adding or subtracting expressions with exponents. Your book has lots more examples of everything we've seen here. To practice what you've learned, let's take a swing at this complicated looking thing. First, let me assure you, you do know how to do it. Don't panic. Use what you know, take one letter at a time, and go for it. And if I were you, I'd reduce those numbers first. Pause the program while you work. When you have it solved, click play, and we'll compare notes. We can solve this expression if we keep cool and use what we know, step by step. We can certainly reduce those numbers by dividing the top and the bottom by 7 without affecting the rest in any way. That looks less messy already. Then we can take that xy to the third on the top and rewrite it x to the third, y to the third, and it still means the same thing. That lets us use the rule for division. Remember, subtract exponents, top minus bottom. Subtract the exponents for the x's first, and then the y's. We do them as two separate problems and end up with an exponent of 4 for x and 7 for y. So our final answer is 5x to the 4th, y to the 7th. Do you see how big, messy expressions can be easy to simplify when you take them one small step at a time? Be sure to try more problems right away while the exponent rules are still fresh in your mind. Find them in your textbook or the study guide. These four statements tell you everything you need to know to get the answers you want.